how to get a technique working from drill to free play. Hello there, Stefan and Martin here from Schildwache Potsdam. Today to answer a question we got on the community tab. How to get a technique working and how to train something that it doesn't only work in static and cooperative drills, but also in free play, free fencing, sparring and tournaments. And the very easy answer is just get good. There you have it. Okay, but how to get good? How to get good in anything and especially in martial arts? Well, in my opinion, there are three components you need to work on to get any technique to work. And the first one is the theory side of things or the knowledge side. You need to know the technique, you need to know how to apply it, when to apply it, so what the circumstances of the specific techniques are and why this technique works in these circumstances. First component. The second one is the physical knowledge. So the practical side of things. It's not enough to just know why a technique works, but you also have to get this technique into your body and uh, form the so-called muscle memory to call upon it when the time arrives. And the third part, and it shouldn't be underestimated, is the mental component. For once, you need to trust yourself in a high pressure situation to apply this technique when you see the circumstances where this technique works um, come to rise. Okay, so three components, theory, practice and the mental component. Okay, the problem is most of our training goes into all these, uh, all these components just very shallow and then throws us into the cold water, into free play, into sparring. And there's a huge gap between these training methods. So for today, I want to uh, tell you about a couple of stepping stones. So let's learn a new technique together. So uh, I'll teach uh, Stefan the new technique. I hope it's a, a fairly simple one because now we are entering the introduction phase. So we want to counter a mandrito to our head. So a blow from the opponent's right to his left or right over how. For me, it comes to the left side of my head. And we want to counter this with a parry in guardi di testa. So that's a, a hanging parry on our left to block the pass of the incoming, th incoming sword. And then we want to strike around with our own tramazzone or mandrito again. So a tramazzone, just a blow from our wrist, which is circling around our wrist. So, okay. So Stefan, um, for this introduction, nary phase, you don't need a lot of equipment at all because you want to uh, memorize the circumstances, which is a mandrito to the head. And then you want to practice the very basics. So you can leave the mask on the ground. You want to uh, get into your guardi di testa. And then just look if it actually blocks the mandrito. And this is a fairly simple introductionary phase. And then if the uh, the blow, the strike is parried, then there comes the riposte, which is the mandrito. Okay, so this is like super static because we are both coming from a standing, a still position. And maybe you can even get it a bit more into a flow. So I come with a bit more intent and then it comes around. So this is really an introduction phase, okay? You get the very basics of knowledge and the very basic of the, um, 
of the practical knowledge as well and almost none of the mental component okay when you go from this stage directly to sparring you are set up to fail okay so what's the next phase uh, get a mask <laughs> because now we are getting into the isolation and variation phase. So in the isolation phase, you want to train this, this technique. You want to uh, get to work in your free play in an isolated way. So you get a lot of repetitions in there. So for example, I can now up the pressure, the intensity without going and doing anything else. I'll just go a bit faster and a bit harder. And if Stefan notices that the blow strikes through, he can, um, he can adapt and change his parry just a bit. He can even work a bit on his footwork if he notices that that works. And all I do is do going for the same blow over and over again doing it in a fairly um, consistent way so he can work on the very basics of the techniques. Okay, this is the isolation phase. And then we go into the variation phase because no two opponents will throw the same blow in the same way just because some people are taller, some people are smaller, some people are stronger, some people just move in a tiny bit of different way. That's, because, uh, that's the reason why almost all the old masters recommend us to switch partners regularly. So to fence with a lot of experienced opponents. Then we get this variation, okay? And one thing you can do if you don't have another partner is to tell them to variate their blow. So I can throw the mandrito this way, but I also could change the angle a bit. I could lower my hands. I could even not throw it to the, uh, to the side of the head, but I could throw it more to the top of the head, more to the left side or to the uh, right side of Stefan. Okay, these are all small variations and this is something you want to experiment next with. So we're still static, but I'm looking to do this blow in a couple of different ways. I can even come from different starting positions. Okay. And then if you have variated the blow, you also want to leave this static drilling fashion behind you. Okay, that's the ne next thing. Especially if you want to learn the measure of the technique you are learning, you need to go from a more dynamic way and that's working from natural footwork. I try to work my in here. And this is still super cooperative, okay? And all my blows are still going in a mandrito way to the head of my opponent. Okay, I'm not fainting. I'm always doing a mandrito. I just variate this one a bit. Okay. Then, after you have the isolation and the variation phase, there comes the integration phase. You want to integrate this techniques in the canon of techniques you're already familiar with. So while I had small variations in the blow, I now introduce some big variations. So completely other inputs, completely other circumstances to uh, teach Stefan that there are, this technique doesn't work all the time. Okay, so for example, I still do my mandrito and here the circumstances apply, but then I go for a reverso to 
the leg, for example. And now Stefan has to react to this one as well and defend this as well. And this is really the point, and I should uh, have already done this earlier, to get a mask myself, but then talking to you gets quite, diff uh, quite difficult. And in this integration phase, you still want to go for the focus on the technique you're actually training. So my rule of thumb is that I usually go for the circumstances of the technique we are training around half of the time and the other half is pretty much random, okay? So there are a few which where I still try to get with the mandrito to the head, but then I go with the reverso to the head as well. Or with the mandrito ridapio to the head. So variations, okay? Next, there is something, there's a zone of failure and success that is uh, most, most useful for your training, okay? Up till now, you've seen Stefan almost always succeed because he knows this technique already quite well, okay? Good job on you. But actually, that comfort zone of succeeding 80, 90, or maybe even 100% of the time. This builds your mental component. He learns that the technique he's training, it works. He gains the confidence to use it in the higher pressure moment, okay? So, what I want to do, especially in the isolation phase, is if my opponent is not that confident in the technique, I want, um, to give, I want to give them an intensity, a pressure, a speed, that, so that they can at least succeed in 50% of the time. Maybe even 60 or 75, so 3 out of 4 is a good rule of thumb for them to succeed. And if they succeed even more, so in the 80 to 100% in the comfort zone again, then I want to up the pressure. And you need really to wear appropriate uh, safety equipment to do this, okay? Never up the pressure if your safety equipment doesn't allow for it. That's a really important one. But you always want to up the pressure until you cannot do it anymore, okay? Until you cannot do it anymore. And then you proceed to the next stage. So from the isolation, you could then go to the variation and then to the integration phase where you do other techniques, okay? And really, since um, you're probably g giving group sessions as I do, you don't have the time to teach all your students individually, get your students in the mindset, frame the lesson in a way that there's always one coach and one student and then they switch roles regularly, okay? So in this case, I was a coach, okay? I'm looking for the right intensity for Stefan to learn this technique, okay? It's not a problem if I get hit, okay? Stefan, of course, takes care of me. That's no problem at all. But you are a coach. You want to teach your partners to learn this technique. So get a, uh, be a better training partner just by applying this um, comfort or challenging zone rule, okay? Challenge zone from 50 to 80% success rate, comfort zone from 80 to 100, and everything less than 50%, that's maybe more like a frustration zone. You don't learn to apply the technique, you learn to fail actually, and this really destroys the mental component, and it's also the danger of sparring too early, okay? Because then you do the technique, it doesn't work, what will you do yet? Yeah, well, you will fall back onto your instincts or onto other techniques that work for you. And then you will get a very narrow set of techniques that you will be able to do in free play. Okay, after the integration phase, there is the play stage or maybe experimentation. And there the student-coach relationship kind of vanishes because it's now 
like a more uh, uh, incentivized free play, okay? And you could, of course, and that's something I've seen quite common, is quite common as well, to incentivize for them to use the technique. So, for example, if Stefan goes, uh, gets, with, uh, gets to hit me with the Guadalajara Testa Perry and the Mandrito, he gets extra points. But that's actually extra hard because now, if I notice, he, uh, he has to set up that technique and then he has to pull off the technique. So these are two stages actually the way he has to succeed. The setup and then the practice again as well. So maybe if you want to make it a bit easier, incentivize the circumstances where the technique actually works. Okay, so I should again uh, wear a mask, but if we now would go for free play and we want to work on our Guade di Testa Perry into a Mandrito, we want to incentivize the, uh, the circumstances where it works, and that's a direct hit with a Mandrito to the head. Okay, so there, no one of us has to care for the setup anymore because the technique we worked on all day is a perfect counter for the thing we will do more often. And then from there, you can do it for the next stage and then into free play. And so you can fill this huge gap from static drill to free play bit by bit. Okay, we hope this video was useful for you and I hope you put it to good use and we'll see you in the next time. Thank you and ciao.